What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome. I am the Crypto Crow. And today we're going to be talking about Sui <laughs> and a little bit of Solana uh, and, and you know, like a touch of Cardano. Now, if you're watching YouTube at all, you see the hype. OK, there's a lot of hype around Sui. That's S-U-I, Sui blockchain. Now, uh, I, you know, <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, I own some Sui, OK, but um, I consider it kind of a degen play. And and there's there are several reasons for this. And I'm not encouraging anyone to go out and buy it personally, but I'm going to show you some information. Um, number one, I want to preface this by saying I'm not being paid to talk about Sui at all. I'm not a Solana influencer, obviously. If you know anything about me, it's the only blockchain I truly despise. Um, it, it's like I have S, uh, SDS, the Solana derangement syndrome. I'm, I'm, I'll just flat out admit it. Uh, but it's all based on data. It's not just personal emotions. It's just a, it's my contention on Solana based on everything I've seen. Um, but this isn't even about Solana, but it is about Solana influencers. And it's about the same people who are active in the Solana ecosystem who are constantly and have been constantly pumping Solana for years now uh, and make a lot of money doing it. But I'm going to show you a lot of things as it relates to Sui and how there might be a little more than meets the eye when it comes to the two and the competition between the two and what's potentially happening. So we're going to go ahead and dive into that. Um, you'll see here, if I just type in SOL versus Sui in uh, YouTube, I get a whole list of Solana influencers that are actively pumping Sui. Okay. And, you know, this is one that I saw. This was two weeks ago, 50,000 views. This guy, major Solana holder, does a video two weeks ago about how he sold all of his Solana for Sui. And there's a lot of there's a lot of this. Um, you can just plug it into to YouTube and scroll down and you'll see all of the Sui hype. Now, the the thing that I find interesting is that Sui's pretty new. I mean, it just came out of nowhere. And when you've got thousands and thousands of new tokens out there, how is it that all of these Solana holders and these Solana influencers suddenly are all about Sui? And it, it really makes me wonder. And, and if you look at the timing of a lot of these videos, I find it interesting that the timing a lot of this stuff is leading into token unlocks. And so I don't know if any of these individuals have any deals or they're being paid in any way. I have no idea. I'm just going to put that out there. I don't know. But there are some things that I have noticed. Now, before we get into some of this other stuff, this is Sui currently trading at $1.75. And it's in a bit of a downtrend right now. Why? Well, because there's a token unlock today for about $100 million worth of SUI tokens. Uh, but the current market cap is about $4.8 billion, all right? And its circulating supply is only $2.7 billion out of the total supply of 10 billion tokens. Now, I did recently just take the Sui white paper and pump it into my um, my notebook LLM that creates those uh, back and forth discussion podcasts. I'm going to upload that on uh, AI audio files. Uh, it's the other channel that I've been I launched recently. A lot of good stuff there. Go check it out. Um, and I've been looking at Sui scan and I've just I've been looking at a lot of stuff trying to figure out what what's the common denominator? Why is this? pumping so hard all of a sudden if we look at the chart you can see first of all it's not that new okay this is uh this is sui on coinbase originally listed back in may of 2023 you can see that in this march pump it pumped dramatically from a low of 36 cents all the way up to two dollars so that's a significant pump and then all the way back here, you're talking August. What caused this significant rally from a, a low of 73 cents all the way up to basically a peak of $1.95? Does it make any sense? Make it make sense. I don't know. But I dove into it. 
And I feel like I can kind of hazard a guess. And I've I've alluded to some of this stuff previously, but I it's like I've just been going through all the details and I'm like, okay, so there are two elements to this. One, is Sui going to go up? Probably, but after its dip. Because what I believe has been happening is all of these videos that people are, are, are basically pumping Sui, it's all being pumped into this unlock schedule. And I really don't think it's by accident. However that may have come about, I don't know. But I don't think it's by accident. And when you look at the unlock schedule, um, you can see that today, finally, it's happening now, which is why the price is starting to dip. But a lot of these influencers, in my opinion, are cre creating um, kind of this FOMO so that people are buying into the liquidity provided by the token unlock. $100 million worth of tokens are being unlocked today, and uh, at least according to a lot of the data that I'm seeing. And so they don't want that price to crash. And obviously there's going to be a pullback, which we're seeing in the chart. There's gonna be a pullback, but the, the more people that are buying into this SUI token right now, and have been for a while creating that upward momentum in price, the less likely it is that people are gonna dump their tokens because of these unlocks and that these unlocks are basically going to fall into the hands of, because what, what is an unlock? Well, just so you know, we're, we'll, I'll, I'll, I'll basically dive in. So this is some history, okay? In August, which it's interesting because <laughs> the price was all the way down here at 48 cents in August, right? Don't forget that. In August, FTX Ventures led Mistin Labs high profile $2 billion Series B fundraise just months before FTX filed for bankruptcy in November. The firm invested $101 million in the round, receiving about 570,000 shares of preferred equity in Mistin Labs and warrants to purchase up to about 890 million SUI tokens, according to court filings. FTX entities paid about $101 million for the equity and an additional $1 million for the token warrants. So that's just one element. That's just one little thing. And there's so much. I just don't want to do an hour video. But it's very interesting to see who all is involved in this. Former Meta execs raised $300 million to accelerate the adoption of SUI blockchain. This is September 9th. Investors included FTX Ventures, Coinbase Ventures, Jump Crypto, which is becoming a very famous name in the VC firms, A16Z, also another very popular name amongst the, the Solana community, Circle Ventures, among others. So there's there are all these players who were, who were initially involved in both FTX and Solana. All these little deals are happening literally at a time when... Basically, the, the token was down. They basically established a new initiative for accelerating the adoption of SUI token. Then, within around that same time frame, we're suddenly getting all these Solana influencers pumping SUI like it's the next best thing since sliced bread. I'm selling my Solana to get into SUI. Why is SUI going to kill Solana? SUI's the Solana killer. All of this stuff, right? We're seeing all of this when the price is basically, we're start, seeing a lot of this stuff kick off. Let's take a look. Let's see, because um, I didn't I didn't chart this out, but let's just see where this really kicks off. So that's 47 days. So that's 47 days alone, uh, just between uh, 47 cents and its pump up to this point here, which is about a dollar, right? And we continue seeing that pumping, pumping, pumping. So there's your accelerated adoption. I don't know if there's a correlation between the $300 million towards accelerating adoption and all of the Solana holders and Solana influence. I mean, like the biggest Solana influencers out there, like these guys, they're all pumping SUI and it's working because the price has been going up. And and it's it's interesting too, because there's such a limited supply on the market that it's easier and you have to put less money, really, and less effort into pumping the value of a token with a very low circulating supply. What challenges that is when the circulating supply is added to by token unlocks of those who ultimately and effectively invested in the very earliest rounds of the project. 
these token unlocks come when big corporations, major venture capitalist groups, all of that, they buy in. They're getting these tokens at pennies on the dollar, right? Fractions of a penny in, in a lot of cases. And then they basically, they can put additional funds into building the ecosystem around the base protocol that they've initially invested in while their tokens are locked up. So they're helping to basically build the ecosystem. And I'm not even saying this is necessarily a bad thing, just so that we understand each other. I'm not trying to dunk necessarily on Sui, but I am trying to figure out the correlation between the downfall of Solana and the pump of Sui and how that affects everybody. Um, but ultimately that token unlock, you might have a, a year vested, right? Or two years vested, right? So you basically, are, you're not able to touch these tokens until a certain time frame, And that's typically based on when you got into the project, uh, you know, how early of an investor you were, how much you invested all that. So get ready. October, 2024 is shaping up to be a significant month for token unlocks. You can't even really see that. I need to pump that up a little bit. Celestia, which I'm also seeing recently be, being get uh, getting pumped by people, uh, is releasing 91.94% of its circulating supply. And Solana is unlocking over $364 million worth of tokens. But that's just part of the story. This month features some major unlocks that could influence the market in the long run. Our latest unlock reports covers our latest our latest unlock report covers all the key details you need to stay ahead. Dive in and make sure you're prepared. So then it's basically showing this chart of what's getting unlocked, right? You've got uh Tia, which I don't know what that is. I guess that's Celestia. Uh yeah, okay. So that's Celestia. So that's the highest. It's a billion dollars getting unlocked this month. Solana is the next biggest at $364 million. Then you've got in fourth place, you've got 100 million on Soul, okay, or Sui, sorry. Um, and you can see a lot of tokens have unlocks because a lot of the a lot of the stuff is from treasuries for staking rewards and things. Like you can see Cardano's on this list all the way at the very end with 44. Uh, is that 44 million? I, I guess it's 44 million. And basically, what that boils down to is like staking rewards for nodes and and all of that. So a lot of this stuff is common, but significant, but at the same time, the vast majority of Cardano is already circulating out there in the world. Um, and its market cap is pretty substantial compared to like some of these other projects that they're growing, but they're constantly dumping more tokens on the market, but they're also incentivized in a lot of ways to pump these values of these tokens. Solana's in a league of its own, okay, when it comes to what it does, how it got to where it's at, and all of that. But the, the correlation between Solana, its initial investors, and those playing in that ecosystem and what they're doing to pump it, I find interesting because it's starting to transition into SUI instead. Now, I don't know what the grand scheme is or what the overall agenda is, if there's supposed to be an actual transition out of Solana into SUI. But when I look at the data, it, it, it's it's kind of interesting. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, here's the thing. A lot of people think, oh, Crow, you're such a, a Solana hater, blah, blah, blah. I am, honestly, I am. And I'm not gonna, you know, it, it is what it is. I, I know that a lot of people are being paid really, really well um, to, to pump Solana and have been for a long time. Teach their own, whatever. I wish they would disclose it, uh, but I don't see a lot of that. I just see a lot of the the FOMO and, and all of that being established by a lot of these folks. And at the same time, they're always dunking on Cardano, which, okay, fine. You know what I mean? Solana's not perfect. It's had, or uh, Cardano's not perfect. It's had its issues. It has taken a long time. I get it. Everybody's in the, I want my value now. I want to make my money now. I get it, man. We're all desperate, especially nowadays, right? Everything's just going to shit in Shinola. And so you want to attach yourselves to anything you think is going to help you pay your bills. I'm not faulting anyone for that. But the reality to me is, is that I'm looking more down line, right? I'm looking downrange to understand what the future holds, how our economy is transitioning from what to what. And that matters. I, I just saw a recent thing on, um, I wonder if I shared that. Let me check and see if I shared this. Um, because if so, I'd love to play it. Yeah. So I find this very interesting. Edward Snowden talking about... Um, 
talking about Solana and, and like the, the whole idea behind it, basically taking what could have been quality tech, but centralizing it so that it's a lot faster, but ultimately creating a lot of problems for itself. And I honestly do believe that the narrative is going to start going against Solana. I've said, I've been saying this for a long time now, and it's not just me being a hater. I really do think this is gonna be Solana's last market. And I think that the seeds are already being planted by everybody in terms of how people are gonna transition out of Solana into Sui. Not only that, but a lot of these same people the major Solana holders that have made a lot of money with Solana and everybody's working together and pumping it up and there's this whole FOMO ecosystem around Solana are also now dunking on Ethereum. So some of this transition is is leading, it, they're basically saying, I'm done with Ethereum, it's been nine years, it hasn't amounted to much of anything, it's basically, it, it's met its, you know, it, it's hit its prime, it's melting basically. I'm going into Sui. I'm done with Solana. They're not saying I'm done with Solana because of all of the reasons everybody's pointed out. They're just leaving Solana because they feel like now you can buy into Sui at a much lower price than Solana. While Solana is suffering the, 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 basically the facts of its nature, they're saying, well, I'm gonna get out of this now too, and I'm gonna get into Sui instead because the price is much lower. We're gonna redo this all over again with Sui over Solana. Now, here's here's how I truly think about it. Let's just say that's the case, okay? They're pulling out of Ethereum, they're pulling out of Solana, they're entering SUI, and you know, SUI is slowly gonna unlock more tokens over time until it gets to its 10 billion supply. 10 billion supply is not that bad for a layer one, especially if it does everything that's, that SUI uh, is slated to do. Here's the thing, for those of you that believe that I hate Solana just because they're always lying about Cardano and just always making up all these false narratives, um, that's really not it. Like the, uh, competition in the crypto space is fine by me, that's good. I don't like the way it's grown. I don't like how so much is ignored about the chain. I don't like how it's like it's like a brainwashed individual. You can show that was it Mark Twain said it's easier to fool somebody than prove to them that they've been fooled. It's like that's the mentality. A lot of that mentality is driven by the greed of those that are pushing the narratives because they're making a hell of a lot more money because they're getting in before the rest of you, okay? Like, they're in the know. So they're already loaded up when they're doing these videos telling you to go out and buy it that pushes the price up for them. So they're already winning just by them doing videos on the content. They don't even need to be receiving checks from from like any of the VC groups or, or any of the... the they don't need to be receiving checks, okay, is my point. But they're already in the know, and they're all working together. A lot of them are in communities together, okay? So, but the, the thing is, is that if Sui does what Solana was set out to do, but in a truly decentralized way, it's not like centralized shit that's basically masked as something else just for the sake of creating a narrative, right? And it, and it can achieve what it set out to do and do it better, and in a more pure way, like with all with less just lies, misinformation, smoke screens, all of that kind of stuff, I'll support it I, because I'm not about I'm not such a Cardano maxi that I'm opposed to additional technology entering the space that's going to help everybody achieve the ultimate goal, which to me is the decentralized ecosystem by which all of us can prosper, achieve our financial goals, and basically compete with the banking systems that are not doing us any favors. I mean, that's really what I'm about. That's what I'm here for. It's just until now, I've only looked at Cardano as being the answer to a lot of those solu those problems. And, and it's like Solana, whatever, it is what it is. Sui, ah, maybe there's something there. I know that a lot of these Solana people think there's something there. And I know that there's there's a transition happening, obviously, from the Solana ecosystem, its initial investor base and all of that, and they're moving into Sui. My only suggestion is if you just stop with the bullshit and you're actively promoting a blockchain that 
doesn't need to be artificially inseminated, I guess, if you like, I don't know what else you want to call it, but if it can just grow on its own merit, all of the business, the investments, you know, this group is putting in 300 million, this group's putting in 2 billion, whatever the hell it is. I, that's just business. I, I'm not opposed to that. That's great. Okay. There's a lot of business that evolves around all of these blockchains. I'm simply saying, listen, can we not figure out a way to judge these blockchains and what they're doing for the public based off of their actual merit for once and actually value the quality of the technology that's being created and then work in favor of that instead of everything having to be a zero sum game because the world is a really big place and we don't always have to be at each other's throats. I'm just about... I'm very much against the dishonest nature of some of the stuff that I see in the crypto space. And when it comes to like greed and, and it's like, it makes me literally ill to see some of what happens in the space. And, you know, it's like, I'm not super wealthy. You know what I mean? It's like, I'm affected deeply by a lot of what goes on. And, and I'm affected emotionally, quite frankly. And, and I have my up days and my down days. But I do believe that I'm here for a reason that goes beyond just my own personal wealth and, and just everybody making money. I want to see everybody do well. But at the same time, I'm more and more concerned with the macroeconomic situation that we're in, not just in this country, but in multiple countries following a very specific agenda that scares the shit out of me in a lot of ways. And I feel like the more we just ignore centralized control and we, the more we ignore the centralization of a space that was meant to disrupt all those systems to begin with, just because we think we're gonna make a little extra money tomorrow, to me, that's just selling out. And, and, and I really do believe that. And so I have stuck to my guns when it comes to Cardano because I see the future and I see what it's building. But I also believe that it's not a zero sum game. And the, the, the things that Cardano does and the problems it solves may very well be different from something of that of a SUI or a, a, you know, an Iagon, or uh, you know, any of these other blockchains, any of these other like layer two solutions or whatever, even Bitcoin for that matter. I've actually been learning more about ordinals and how that all works. I want some of those ordinals NFTs I've been seeing, but I haven't picked any up yet. But anyway, that that's all I'm, I'm saying today. It's just like, I, I really do wish that there was a way for, uh, I, I'm, I really am more about the tech side of things than I am just number go up. And and I'm willing to give Sui a chance and I'm willing to say, listen, I'm down. I'm down for any technology that's going to be decentralized and offer solutions to people to, to truly kind of change the way we are able to operate as individuals. Um, and, and if it's Sui or if it's Cardano or if it's a combination of both amongst other blockchains out there entering the space, you know, I see Caspa talked about a lot. I see, I see a lot of stuff. I'm all for it. Just keep the bullshit to a minimum and let's just really get real on what's happening and stop trying to put lipstick on pigs in hopes that our pockets are going to get fatter at the expense of every at the expense of everyone that we're able to like convince is, is something else. So that's all I have to say today. Happy Tuesday, folks. Until next time, crow your coins and I'll see you soon.